So when did you think that you were ready to show Slash what you were capable of while he was in Road Crew? 1983, I called Slash up. I said, dude, meet me at La Cienega Park. And I said on my I went there, I said on my drums and he showed up and I just played for him. And I said, dude, you ready to put a band together? And he goes, fuck yeah. New Year's Eve party, and you saw Slash play for the first time when he was actually in a band. Yeah. Like, when he knew how to play. And and you kept pointing at him because you couldn't believe how good he was yeah. or how good he'd gotten. And that that's when you basically you wanted in. So yeah, I want I want I always wanted to be a part of Slash's life. And that's when you that's yeah. when you auditioned for him and, and the double bass drums blew him away. Yeah, yeah, I had a double bass. Huge drums, <laughs> ridiculous. The reason I, I started playing one bass drum is because the Slash called me up and he said, me, Axel, Izzy, and Duff. Duff got a show in Seattle and a show in Oregon. And I was playing with this other guy, these other guys in, the, in Reseda. And my mom said, you know, or my grandmother said, your friend Slash called you. She she never liked him. <laughs> I went down to some some studio in Silver Lake, and I broke my bass drum head when I was playing with the band earlier. So I just set up the bass snare floor tom, and a ride across and high to the cowbell, and everything fell together that day. Because I don't need those drums. This is how it is. Everything I wrote for Appetite and Lies was all on a bass drum, a snare drum, a floor tom, one ride, one crash, one hi-hat, one cowbell. So you, you simplified. And it worked. I, I didn't want it to be that way, but once I started playing instantly, I was going, yeah, this is, how, this is what I've been needing. I've been needing to get rid of that, those, all those other drums and focus on, on the rhythm. And Duff, he, he came to L.A. when we met him at Canners. He came to L.A. a guitar player. And then we started hanging out at the clubs and, and going to shows, and he realized there's a fucking million guitar players, but there's only 10 bass players. So Duff's bass playing is more like he's playing a guitar. And I learned most, uh, basically all of my music, my rhythms, from playing with the guitar player. So once we started jamming, I started jamming with Duff, it, it just fell together because he didn't play like boom, 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 boom. He played what the guitar was doing, you know? And that gave me the option to be able to play, play the bass drum for what he's playing. And it just, everything just came together. It was literally fucking magic. That's the only word I could think of. If it wasn't for Mark Hanner, <laughs> the five of us would not have survived each other. We would not be famous. We would not do anything. Mark is the, the main pusher of us. I just took the little, I took the, the edge off and, and made sure there wasn't too much extra stress to get to the next gig. Yes, you It was did. the little things. It was just little there, things. There was the little things that turned out to be basic. Some flyers, some food, some guitar strings, just uh, some that was everything. rides to rehearsal, whatever, whatever, just little, little things. But those little things were everything. Yeah. The purchasing, the BAM, the, the ads in BAM magazine, because as soon as we started doing that, the show the show started selling out. So it it it, it definitely brought crowds. And then once the sh once people saw them, they told two friends, and they told two friends, and they and told so two on. friends. Like that shampoo commercial, and so <laughs> on, and so on. And but then it was all but Mark was the number eventually, one. Eventually, my goal was to make sure they can get to the next gig until someone could recognize them that could really do something like a record company. And so. Basically, that happened, and, and and then they took it from there. 
But Mark, you documented everything. I you documented document. everything because that's it what, was That's gold. what I'm saying. If you want to know the absolute truth about Guns N' Roses from 1985 to 1990, you have to buy Reckless Road. That is the closest, the closest of what we wore and who we wore at that time. And he got us shows. Did you get that show at at, at uh, UCLA? No, no, no. That that was later on. Oh, that. Oh, you're the right. The part that, with the chi no, no, chili no, no, peppers. The, the, oh, with the chili peppers. No, that was after you guys were signed. But there oh. was a show at at UCLA at a frat party. The frat party. That's what yeah, I'm talking the about. Frat party. That. But that happened. You guys played the Troubadour on July 20th, of 1985. And and at that. Somewhere after that show, somebody was backstage and said, hey, you guys were great. Why don't you play our frat party tomorrow? <laughs> and, and we'll give you like, you know, like 50 bucks or 35 bucks and, yeah. and some free beers I, or something sure, like that. I'm sure it was 20 bucks and beer. Yeah. <laughs> and I remember the Welcome to the Jungle was just debuted that night. Oh. That was the hot new song. So the next day I got, to, I first heard it for the first time that night. But the next day I got to hear it again and really understand what yeah. I was hearing. Because you don't really get it the first time you hear it. I didn't even know the words. <laughs> I didn't know the words to most of our songs till the record came out. The actual never came to rehearsal. But it really wasn't his fault because we didn't have a PA. So it was basically Duff, Izzy, and Slash and myself playing. And Axel would just come in at the last second and just blow everybody's mind. I remember when the record came out, I, I was out listening to words going, holy shit, this guy's a genius. Why is he such an asshole? <laughs> oh, that's why he's a genius. <laughs> <laughs>To watch the entire episode and access the full series, bonus episodes, and image galleries from Mark's extensive archive, join our growing community on Patreon and subscribe. If you've enjoyed this preview, then like our video, comment below, and subscribe for more.